Hi guys, uh, welcome back to the second part of uh, this Unit 1 Changing Population uh, Landowner Education Geography video. Um, in the first part, if you haven't checked it out, we talked a lot about the definitions and um, that you guys are going to be needing for this topic in that paper too. Um, we also discussed um, factors that affect mortality rates and also uh, birth rates. In this particular episode, I really want to talk about um, a couple of the different models uh, and the um, diagrams that the IB wants us to be familiar with. Um, and they're really simple, um, but I know a lot of students kind of get intimidated by some of the ideas um, that they represent. Okay, the first one is this beautiful thing called the demographic transition model. Okay, I'm sure it's something your, your teachers have, have commented on before. It's absolutely fantastic. Okay, um, it's a really, really um, clear, uh, clear model in terms of representing how a, a how a country's population size changes as it moves through a particular number of stages. Okay, and in this particular uh, model, there's five stages. Okay, so we've got that number one, that high stationary stage, and the early expanding stage, late expanding, low stationary, and then declining. Uh, and in each of these different sections, there's something that is changing. And I just want to discuss briefly what's going on, what are the factors that might have caused the population size to change. Okay, total population represented by that red line. So we're seeing an initial um, steep increase and then into four and five, uh, a, a kind of flattening and then a um, slight decline, possibly in stage five. Um, so in, in, uh, in stage one, this is commonly found in, in just remote groups. Okay, so not not many um, countries right now are, are in that stage one. Um, the, the, there are kind of two things that define it, and it's that very high kind of birth rate and that very high death rate. So that that birth rate is that blue line, and the death rate the black line. So they're both high and they're both fluctuating. And the reason that the birth rate is high um, is because many many many, new, many children sorry uh, are possibly needed um, agriculturally okay, to help work the land. Some of them die at a very early age, sadly, so they might be um, there might be that compensation idea that we talked about in that episode before. Maybe religious reasons uh, and maybe just a lack of contraception, contraception more generally. So that's why we have that very high birth rate and that, and that high death rate is caused by a lack of good medical care. Um, so that's disease, that might be famine, um, and that's why a lot of those children might be dying um, and why that death rate might be um, at that high level. So that's why we've got the high birth rate, high death rate. Hence our population. Okay, if we do our uh, natural increase calculation, it's pretty low. There's a there's a very stable population. Um, although it goes up and up and down, there's no big increases, no big decreases. As we move into into stage two, uh, there might be a few LEDCs in this in this particular group right now. The, the the kind of crucial thing you guys need to remember and recognize is that our death rate suddenly starts to fall very rapidly. And that's due to improvements in healthcare. So we no longer face those issues I mentioned a second ago. We're better able to care for our population. They're better able to reach old age. So death rate falls pretty significantly. And if we do that natural increase calculation, birth rate uh, minus death rate, well, now we know our death rate is a lot lower. That means there's going to be a lot of kind of natural increase. Hence, that red line starts to skyrocket. Hence, we see very fast population growth in that particular area, in that particular country. Into stage three, uh, we kind of flip it on its head. It's now birth rates that are going to start to decline pretty um, kind of rapidly. And that's a lot down to um, the, the kind of position of women within that particular society, but more so the distribution of contraception. Okay, and that's crucial um, in enabling a country to slow down its population growth and make sure that its birth rate um, starts to fall um, in line with that death rate fall that we mentioned a second ago. So that's how we get that kind of um, tailing off in that in that late expanding stage in stage three. Stage four, um, that's a lot of MEDCs now. Okay, so they, they've um, kind of contrasting to that stage one, they've got a very low death rate now and a very low birth rate. And that means that their population size is kind of stagnating. Uh, it might be growing just a little bit, but it tends to be pretty stable um, for, for a number of years. And that's because we now have that good quality medical care. Okay, people are living longer. We've got vaccinations, but we've also got um, a, a desire to have smaller families. It might be the cost of the family, might be the, the role of women within society pursuing careers, but it's also um, just more generally the, the, the common trend within that particular area, but within that particular country. Stage five now is where uh, those top um, developing countries are now kind of sitting. That's your Japan's, that's your Germany's. Um, they've, they've developed to such an extent that actually their death rate now is falling below their birth rate. So they actually might have an aging population, they might have a declining population in terms of its overall size. That's just because they've got to the stage where um, they're much better able to, to keep people alive for longer. Life expectancy is obviously higher, but also there's still that low desire for larger families within that community, within that country. 
So that's the demographic transition model. Um, I'm sure you guys will cover that in more depth. I just wanted to touch on it briefly. I think it's a really, really cool diagram, not only because it shows us um, these different stages, but because you can, in just one picture, okay, show that birth rate, show that death rate, and then show how um, together they, they affect the population size through natural increase and natural decrease. The really cool thing, though, is we can zoom in on each of these stages to look at what a population pyramid might be kind of looking like. OK, so down there in the bottom left, I've got all those um, stages. Okay, I've just done four of them right now. OK, but you guys um, are going to be able to look at a population pyramid and try and locate it in terms of where it is along its kind of demographic transition, so to speak. OK, so in the bottom left, we've got Angola. OK, we've got that kind of concave shape contra Japan with that convex shape. And if you guys haven't seen population pyramids before, I'll just explain briefly what they're about. Okay, they're just showing a, a country's population in a particular year. Got males on the left, females on the right. Okay, and then that that uh, country is just broken up in terms of different age groups. Okay, it tends to be about an interval of five or so. Okay, but that information can show us a lot about the direction of population is moving in terms of how it's kind of composed. And I've just got a couple of tips and tricks if you guys are ever um, asked, and I'm sure you will be um, in that paper too, to analyze a population pyramid, to, to name what stage it might be in, um, to explain why it might be experiencing what it's experiencing. Um, I think can be thinking first and foremost um, about uh, the bottom. Okay, What does it look like? How heavy is the bottom compared to the top? And because obviously, if the proportion of our population is heavily made out of, of younger people, that's showing that there is a very, very high birth rate. If we compare Angola um, to Japan, well, Japan is very narrow. In fact, it looks like it's getting smaller. That shows us that that birth rate is no longer as high as it probably was a few generations ago. OK, so the, the bottom tells us a lot about the youthfulness of a population okay, and how that population is changing over time. We can also, of course, look at the top. So how high is it? That shows life expectancy of people living longer. That's obviously an indication of lower death rates. And also how, how kind of bulky is that top part? In fact, in that Japan case, it looks like the kind of over um, 60s okay, almost dominate more than the kind of teenagers. Okay, So we might even have more old dependents in that population than young dependents. If you guys aren't familiar with those terms, um, terms rather, I'm going to kind of touch on them in a second um, so you guys can understand what I'm talking about. So look at the bottom, look at the top. They tell us a lot about birth rates and death rates. And then, of course, look at the middle. Okay, that's our economically active population. That's everybody between the, 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 the kind of ages of, of 15 and 64 or so. Okay, The definition changes. Um, I've got it on the next um, slide for you guys to check out. But those are the people who are going to be providing the tax revenue okay, that is going to provide pensions for the elderly population uh, and then education services and healthcare for the entire country. Also, guys, don't neglect the gender ratio. So that's looking at males versus females. Is there a lot more males in the population okay compared to the females it's unlikely okay based on uh, biology but there have been cases particularly in places like Germ um, china and, and india uh, where we've got this um uh desire for, for more um young men in the in the, um, in the community in, in those countries okay so their gender ratio is slightly um skewed okay the patriarchy in that country means that they are there is a great desire to have um boys again that can influence the gender ratio and you can see that uh, visually um, on a population pyramid when one of those sides is is larger than the other you can also uh, make sure you, you check out if there's any kind of odd bits okay so maybe even on that angola diagram uh, if there was uh, you know uh, um, there was um, a, a section of the population that wasn't um, moving in as as expected that might be because of some other trend something beyond um, the natural demography um, and the theory that would be expecting to, to be represented in these diagrams okay so that might be migration movement in in people in their 20s and 30s could be a war disease and famine okay so there could be something else going on and if you guys have a little bit of general knowledge about a country that might be kind of brought up you could be able to explain exactly why you might be seeing that odd shape or that odd bit that you weren't expecting to see uh, finally just thinking about the overall shape um, and that's um, indicated by those four different diagrams above the angola and japan diagrams okay, they just show the general shape that we'll be expecting to see for those different stages concave meaning kind of moving in quickly caving in so to speak and then convex kind of flexing out in the middle Okay, shows us that actually our youthful population is dwindling and the movement now is into an elderly aging population. Um, in, in a few episodes, we're going to be talking about um, what those um, 
kind of youthful populations and, and aging populations what challenges do, do they kind of um, pose a, a community and, and a country and a government and um, but for now you guys just need to know okay what population pyramids are and how to analyze them as well as possible um, the final thing I want to mention then, and um, before I leave you guys, um, on this video is uh, what the old dependents are. Okay, so that's people who are 65 uh, and over and are dependent on the state and their children. Okay. Young dependents are under the age of 15 and they're dependent on their parents, their guardians and the state, of course. So these two groups, okay, they don't, they're assumed that they don't work. Okay, of course, some of them will, um, but for, for this particular purpose, Okay, for just giving an overview of dependency and, and vulnerability in a, in, a, in a country and we assume that they are outside of the workforce and therefore are dependent on the economically active population okay and these are the other people who are providing um, for those groups okay these are people between the ages of 16 sorry 15 and 64 and they provide by paying taxes um, the reason a, a country might want to manage its population is to ensure that its economically active population is able to provide adequately for those old dependents and those young dependents. Uh, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later on. Uh, but for now, um, thanks guys again for, for tuning in. The next video will um, hopefully will be as uh, useful as this one. And by all means, send me an email if you guys have any questions about the stuff I've covered. Um, it's just Liam at lanterneducation.com. Uh, beyond that, hop onto our website. We've got loads of free resources and um, we've got Geography IA guides out now, uh, but we've got stuff for all of your different IB subjects. If you want a little bit more help, by all means, um, you know, try and find a, a Lanterna tutor. You can call up someone like me. I'm more than happy to help you guys out. Um, but we've got online tutors, um, elite IB tutors. These guys have all scored 40 plus points. The most common score of our team is 45 um, who, are, who are available um, at your beck and call to help you with um, IAs, EEs and any part of the course that you might be struggling with. Cool. Uh, thanks again for watching and see you in the next episode.